Hello everyone, thanks for watching. If you've not already done so, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the, uh, the bell so that you get notified of our new content. Check us out often, check out some of our existing videos. Uh, but uh, hey, with that being said, I want to jump right into it. I have here today a room kit mini, still in the box, all the accessories uh, included. Um, so we're going to unbox it, we're going to check out what came with it, uh, and then get it set up and running. So without further ado, let's dive in and check it out. To get started, we're going to want to open the box up, just slip the tape in the top and uh, open it up like any other box really. Uh, you can see there are a uh, couple of other boxes inside, uh, two small boxes and kind of a, uh, a long narrow box in the back. These are not taped in or fastened in any way so you can pop them right out and uh, set off to the side for now. We might take a look at those first to be honest, but uh, but yeah, there we go, long skinny box. And then there is a little bit larger box inside. I'm gonna have to assume that that is the room kit mini itself. So let's open up each of these individually and see what we're working with. All right, so the room kit mini box, you can open that up. There's a little bit of uh, literature in here, help you get started. We have a uh, HDMI cable, there is a Ethernet cable, pretty good length to that just in case. There's an Allen wrench, so we can expect some Allen wrench uh, uh, hex uh, screws in here somewhere. There is a power adapter, so uh, standard power on that side and uh, your barrel connector. We have, here's what we're really looking for. Here is the room kit mini itself, the camera, the speaker bar. You take that out of the packaging there and uh, check it out. Okay, we got a uh, couple different things going on on the back here. We have USB, a couple different USB ports. We have power, power switch. There's HDMI in and out. And we have two ethernet ports, one to the network and one to the touch 10 panel, which I would assume is in one of these smaller boxes. So uh, yeah, there it is. There's the uh, the camera, the image sensor, there's gonna be mic and speaker in these, uh, in the, the sides here. Um, there it is. Let's set this off to the side and get some of the other accessories out, get this thing installed and uh, up and running. Also in the box with the room kit mini, there is a mounting bracket. See it has slotted holes and uh, couple different uh, adjustment settings there. Keep that handy uh, for mounting. Set that off to the side as well. Next let's check out our long narrow box. See a couple items inside here. There's a uh, little white bag with a uh, bag of hardware inside. So some fasteners, uh, some wing nut type things for, uh, for tightening down. Keep those handy. You don't want to lose any of that. That's uh, how we're going to put the thing together. There are some additional brackets here for mounting on the back of a, uh, a TV. Keep those handy. Uh, I'm going to mount on a display uh, here as well, so uh, I want to keep the mounting hardware available for that. We have two smaller boxes shaped, uh, you know, about like that. Was that 10, 10 inches by 8 inches, something like that, 2 inches thick. Uh, Going to open that baby up and see what's inside of it. One of these is going to be the Touch 10. Let's see if this one's the one. Cool. So yes, this is the Touch 10. We have some literature on it, uh, how to, to use it and get started. The nice thing about the new Touch 10 is it folds flat versus the original Touch 10 actually had the leg that was uh, you know, always at some type of angle. So it comes out of the box, it's folded flat. Um, you can see the uh, Ethernet port in the back there to, uh, to get it connected. We'll keep this guy readily available because we're going to need it to uh, configure and uh, work with the unit. Standard touch interface for all of Cisco's units, of course. Set that off to the side for now. Last but not least, we have another box. A little bit smaller than the box the Touch 10 was in. Let's see what's in this guy. Alright, so additional power and uh, Ethernet cables. Uh, actually, here is a USB cable. So if we're going to use the RoomKit Mini as a uh, like a webcam of sorts, we're probably going to need this. Set that there and keep it available. 
We have standard power. Uh, this is a US, I ordered this for US, so it's a, a US power cord. We have the cable for the Touch 10, the flat ribbon uh, Ethernet cable. And last but not least, we have a uh, heavy duty HDMI cable that uh, can be used for screen sharing, actually plugging in an endpoint and sharing its screen through the uh, through the video unit itself. So I got pretty much everything unboxed. It's still in the bags. We'll pay, take the stuff out of the bags that we need. And uh, yeah, we'll get this thing up and running. If you're gonna install the RoomKit Mini on the back of a display rather than mounting it to the wall, you're gonna to wanna to take this bar. You can see here the uh, C channel shape. Uh, you wanna have the flat side out towards the uh, towards the room, the curved side in toward the display. Uh, take these screws, uh, put the heads on the whole way. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is start this into the back of the display till it's on there good. Tighten this, uh, tighten this against the bracket, kinda of like that. You may still have some of this head, uh, the screw showing. That's fine, you don't wanna run this in so far that it actually damages the inside of the display depending on the model of display. So anyway, be careful with this. Take your time, make sure you get it right. Uh, let's go ahead and install it on our unit here. As you can see, I got it on, got it installed. The next thing we're gonna do is get the bracket that goes through the slot in the middle, and that'll adjust the height of the actual room kit itself. So let's dive into that next. All right, so here is the bracket that we're gonna use to slide in the back. Uh, as you notice, there's uh, not an attachment on the end. I'm gonna lay this down, and I actually wanna get this unit. This is the, the item that comes to wall mount out of the uh, box, right? So typically we'd have this up mounted against the wall, the room kit would fasten on. Uh, what we're going to want to do is actually take this piece off of this piece so that the, this piece can be used with that other bracket I just showed you. So grab the Allen wrench that came with it, take that apart. There's just a, uh, a little screw right inside here to do that. Pretty straightforward, but uh, just something to be aware of. As you get this apart, you'll notice that this piece, which we took these pieces apart, this end looks exactly like this end. So now we can just take and reassemble the system like so. Just like that. And put the screw in and away we go. With the piece assembled, you'll notice the slot in the front here. This is where a, uh, the tab on the room kit is actually gonna go once it's installed on the TV. Let's install it and uh, get this thing up and going. In the bag of screws, there will be a, a little screw like this. You're actually gonna to wanna to use that right here to fasten this and keep this thing from sliding up and down. Station the, uh, the room kit mini exactly how you want it. Last but not least, we want to take the room kit mini, fold down the attachment tab here, and we want to slide that in to the mount that we just installed in the previous step. Once it's in, it snaps in. You can then tilt the room kit mini up and adjust it. So if the display is high on the wall, you can tilt it down a little bit to capture the room. If the display is a little bit lower, smaller, whatever, you can adjust it flat looking straight out. This will be the final step of you know actually physically mounting it. Uh, from here it's onto the back panel to actually do some of the attachments of cables and so forth. Let's look at the back panel and get that done now. To connect the back panel of your room kit mini, get it uh, tilted up on the display. I always start with the you know what's uh, furthest away from me so that I don't have to work around uh, cables that are already installed. On the far side, we have a PoE port, Ethernet port for the uh, flat ribbon cable. It has kind of a little Touch 10 logo there. You can plug this in and uh, you know make sure it snaps in. The next is the Ethernet for the network. Now I believe this device has wireless in it as well. I'm a big fan of you know the cable when it comes to voice and video. Uh, call me old school, but uh, you know you control. You have a lot more control over the experience. 
uh, coming across if you have a um, you know sharing cable you want to use you can plug that in here with the little PC icon I'm not going to WebEx teams wireless sharing works uh, you know really well uh, in my experience so not going to reinvent the wheel there you do need of course an HDMI cable to connect this system to the display so we will plug that in right there uh, if you are using this system with a PC there is a USB port USB C the way it looks with the little USB icon that's where you would plug that in there's a full-size USB USB C and then a uh, kind of a USB console troubleshooting port as well so the main one is going to be the USB C port there last but not least this thing does require some power so we got our power connector we will plug that in like so be sure that the power switch is set to the the uh, on position the little one versus the zero so off on and uh, the system should be ready to go apply power and you're up and running tilt it back down into place you may want to take and you know manage some of these cables uh, but it's behind the display so really up to you and uh, your you know how you like to manage things when the system's up and running you're gonna get a welcome screen kinda like I have behind me you're also gonna see a welcome message on the touch 10 panel uh, pretty straightforward go ahead and hit the blue start button you're gonna see the IP address information displayed uh, you can change network settings if you need to then hit the blue arrow to continue at this point we need to know where do we want to actually register the system uh, in this case I want to register it to Cisco's WebEx cloud so I'm gonna say Cisco WebEx at this point you get to the familiar screen that asks for the 16 digit activation code I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab the activation code we'll type that in and we should be off to the races once you have the code typed in go ahead and press that blue arrow again system will spin for up to 60 seconds uh, and once that's done processing and uh, and everything uh, you get the verify your time zone option I'm just gonna continue on with the blue arrow it's gonna have you you know verify the display is in fact correct uh, if there's some options there some different configuration as far as um, you know image quality and resolution and things like that you'll get that option blue arrow again there is a message on the screen about connecting a USB cable if you do want to use this with a computer I'm gonna just click past this for now you can see the self view on the screen behind me I'm kind of looking at myself the camera I'm recording with that you can actually see right here uh, I'm just gonna move ahead looks good last but not least we want to check the sound kind of hear the sound behind us turn that up a little bit essentially what the system's doing is making sure that the mic and the speakers are working and uh, you know all the audio is in good shape sounds good it says blue arrow again setup is done check mark and we're up and running if you have calendaring enabled in your organization meetings will show up you can dive into there to check out meetings share so share screen whether it be through the HDMI cable or through proximity or you can make a call into your organization as well using the alphanumeric keypad with all that being said I'm gonna let this system upgrade you can see it's it's pulling its upgrade from the cloud as we speak uh, if you're interested in getting your hands on one of these systems talk to your local Cisco reseller uh, or Cisco rep and they can talk to you about what's needed to get up and running systems pretty straightforward to configure very straightforward to use with the touch 10 uh, hopefully this has been helpful if you have questions comments leave them in the comments section below and uh, thanks for watching we'll see you all again soon